Hi guys, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're not going to talk about a prison topic. We're going to do a little bit more of getting to know me type of content. I have a story and I don't know why it's just been on my mind to talk about and you guys kind of enjoy my getting to know you stories. So if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up and then I'll know to keep making it. I was born with a very, very sharp Italian nose. I had a hump, I had a bump, and then this part of my nose drooped all the way down. So from the side, it was very, very aesthetically unpleasing. Also, my nose was and still is, my nostrils are on the wider side. And I still have a little bit of a droop, but we'll get there. I always hated my nose. And as I competed in fitness and I got leaner, my nose felt and looked like it got wider and it looked like it got droopier. I look very, very similar to my father's father who had a very Roman nose with that droopy bottom. I think I was probably in my mid twenties when I went to my first consult for a nose job. And I don't know where I thought I was gonna get the money to pay for this nose job, but I hated my nose. I would fixate on my nose. It was awful, especially from my profile. So I went to the doctor. That doctor himself had a nose job. He was also ethnic. He was Italian as well. So he told me he specialized in ethnic noses. He put my face on a computer screen. He showed me the exact nose he would give me. He said, I don't like to give people with ethnic noses any kind of a slope or I don't like it to go up. He said, because it just won't fit your other ethnic features, your larger features on your face. And I said to him, I have a sister, one of my sisters, the youngest has this adorable little scoop nose and the tip goes up and it's so cute and I think she looks adorable. Could you do that for me? He said, I could do whatever you want, sure. So he showed me that on the computer. I loved it. He said, let's go outside. We'll talk to the nurse where you could talk about billing and financing, etc." So I talked to her about it. Your girl couldn't even come close to affording it, which I'm grateful for now because had I gone through with that, I probably would have had a nose that I didn't really like and it didn't really fit my face. So fast forward a couple more consultations a few years later, I'm now in my early 30s and my sister, who we look very identical, very similar noses, had a friend who got her nose done too. Actually, this is a funny story. Let me tell you the background of their friendship. It's a story in cheating and being mature. So my sister's ex-boyfriend cheated on her with this girl. It was not that girl's fault. Most of us as women, we take it out on that girl. We want to beat up that girl. We want to be mad at that girl instead of the person who is the true problem, which is the man who's cheating on his girlfriend. Duh. So my sister, of course, went through that phase. She was in her early 20s. I'm 10 years older than her. So she was in her early to mid 20s at the time. I'm in my early to mid 30s at the time. And she winds up hating the girl. And then they cross paths somehow a year later. And my sister had already broken up with that guy. She was totally over it. And the girl said, she said, he told me he was single. I had no idea. When I found out that he had a girlfriend, I told him off and I was done with him. She said, I didn't really even like him anyway. So my sister became friends with her. She's like, I liked her honesty. I liked her vibe. I thought she was a cool chick. And that was it. So that girl goes off. They kind of lost touch a little bit. They kept in touch on Instagram. And she notices that that girl got her nose done, that she had gotten her nose done. So she DM'd her on Instagram and she said, hey, just curious. I saw that you had gotten your nose done. She was very vocal about it. I'm curious who you used. Most people are very insecure and they're like, I'm not gonna tell you who did my surgery. I didn't get a nose job. This girl was cool as hell. She's just like me and my sister. You tell me you like my shoes, I'm gonna tell you where I got them. You tell me I like my hair, I'm gonna tell you who does it. You tell me that you like my makeup, I'm gonna be like, this is what I use. Go to Sephora, get this exactly, do it exactly like this because I am not insecure about it. I don't think you're gonna look better than me. And if you do, girl, you rock it. So she tells her, I went to go see this guy, Dr. Z will call him out in such and such in Pennsylvania. So my sister books an appointment with him and I go with her and we went to go see him. He was a doll face. First of all, the waiting room in his office was decorated to the T. It was like somebody's living room. It was gorgeous. Winds up, 
Mrs. Z is an interior decorator. She designed that room. It was beautiful. They took us into the back. They took very good care of us. He took one look up my nose and he goes, oh my God, your septum is so deviated. My sister's septum was deviated, but mine was so deviated. He said, that's why I had this weird ridge here and my nose went out like this over here. And it almost looked like a boxer's nose. Like I had gotten punched in it quite a few times. I hadn't. It's just the way that my nose looked because of my deviated septum. He said insurance should cover a majority of this work. I need to fix your septum. So we're both like, that's cool. The girl that slept with the boyfriend, we'll call her Jennifer. Jennifer's nose looks great. I'm down with it. We didn't realize that Jennifer's nose was very different from ours. Jennifer didn't have a deviated septum, nor did Jennifer have nostrils that were too wide or a droop. So she just had bridge work that really needed to be fixed. So we didn't think twice about it. Jennifer's nose looks great. We book our surgery for 60 days out. We're going over Thanksgiving weekend. So we go, we walk into the hospital four o'clock in the morning. All the nurses were like, oh my God, there's twins here. Check this out, twins getting their noses done on the same day. So we were laughing. Of course, I'm always like, say it again, because I'm 10 years older than her. It, it, she's so over this joke at this point. Or I'll be like, I'm younger than her. She's like, yeah, she's younger than me. She's so over me but we look identical. People think we're twins all the time. So it was really sweet. They took us up. She went first. She was excited that she went first because she was nervous that I was going to go first. I was going to come back and be out of it or look crazy. And she was going to not be able to go through with it. So, and I was fine. I don't care about that kind of stuff. So she goes first. I didn't even see her in recovery. The doctor was so sweet. They asked her, is there anything you want to tell your sister when she was waking up out of recovery? I don't remember exactly what she said, which is not what the doctor said to me. The doctor said, your sister's just waking up out of recovery. She says it was a piece of cake and she loves you. He made it up to make me feel better. So I go in, I get my surgery, I come out, they recovery for a little while, they wheel me back into the room where I stayed with my sister. I had packing, we both had packing in our noses, and this doctor doesn't leave your packing in. He takes it out right then and there, which is amazing. He doesn't leave it in because it's very painful to get packing out after a certain amount of time because it dries in there and then you're pulling out dried packing. Also, if you feel the pressure, that was the worst part of it was having the packing in because you feel the pressure not only through your nose, all through your sinuses here and almost into your ears. Thank God my sister went first and she warned me. She said, when he pulls that packing out, you're gonna feel that all going down the back of your throat. Just remember to breathe. It's gonna be hard to breathe, but it's over in a second. Thank God she said that because he came in, he checked on me. A couple hours later, we were ready to take the packing out. And as he's pulling it out, he held something here for everything to come, for the blood to come out. Sorry, I don't want to freak or gross anybody out. It wasn't gross, but he kind of held like, you know, the little bins that they give you to throw up in when you're in hospital. So it held all that stuff. It all came out in there. And I was like, Ugh! for only a couple seconds, I felt it gurgling. I got really scared, but not as scared as if my sister hadn't warned me. So, and she said she was fine because she experienced crazy nosebleeds her whole entire life. She was used to that feeling. Took it out, it was fine. We went home. My mother was on the couch when we got home. My sister's boyfriend, now husband, my sister's boyfriend at the time picked her up, drove her home because we both drove there in one car. And then my youngest sister and then the sister who had surgery with me, her boyfriend came and they picked us up in a separate car so they didn't have to be there all day. So my sister went home with her now husband and I went home with our youngest sister. And my sister was so funny as she's driving me home, the youngest, she's like, I'm so sorry to hit bumps. I'm like, I feel nothing, I feel great. So we get home and my mother was like, ah! when she saw us because Marissa, my sister's eyes were way worse than me. She had bruising all up here, eyes very swollen, bruising all down here because they, when they break this part of your nose, they hit, they can hit a main artery, which can cause all of this bruising. So I had the same bruising, not nearly as bad as her, but then my bruising lasted a lot longer just because I'm older than her. So throughout the next few days, we were really, really swollen. We had the bruising that dropped down, drops down to like here because of gravity. And then eventually it took me three weeks to get that all of that swelling and that bruising down here gone, fully gone. I was back at work in 10 days, but really three weeks. Oh, and by the way, we went back to the office. It's usually at least seven days with a splint on your nose. 
later to get our splints off. Well, remember, we did it for work-wise. We did it the week before Thanksgiving. So we did it on a Friday. Now here it is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, five days later, and he was gonna be closed, obviously Thanksgiving and then the Friday after, so he had us come in that Wednesday. Both of us think that it's probably possible that it came out a little bit botched because, or part of the reason why we came out botched, both of us, was because we got that splint taken off too early. So we get the splints taken off, our noses were like, ah, we look great. They looked, they did look great for probably a month. But within that month, things were still kind of swollen. You swell for about 18 months after any nose job. So we're like, we're still swollen. For two years, we're like, we're still swollen. We're still swollen. We both hated our noses. My sister developed a bump on her nose right here. She developed a, a pretty large bump here. I developed my bump down here. It was scar tissue. And then because my bump was here and this was still droopy, I developed this thing called polybeak syndrome where it's from a bad nose job and you get a bump and then it goes down and it physically looks like a bird's beak. I'm going to look for pictures back in my Google photos, whatever I find of befores and with the polybeak issue, I'll post it up there. I'll post them throughout this video. So my sister got engaged and she was like, I will not have this nose for my wedding. I don't deserve this. I paid for, we paid minimal for this nose job, by the way, because it wasn't a full nose job. It was more to get our septums fixed, which I don't breathe any worse or better than I did, but my nose hurts all the time now, ever since those surgeries, same with her. So she goes back to the doctor and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Your nose is fine. So then she goes back about six months later and she's like, listen, I need my nose fixed. I have this bump. It is awful. And then he said, he goes, oh, I do see what you're saying now. And she goes, and my sister's is so much worse. She's like, Ro, I would never let you walk around like that. If I was getting mine fixed, you deserved to have your fi yours fixed too. I literally walked around like I had a beak. So I go back to see him a couple days later and he took one look at me and he goes, oh! he's like, I don't know how that happened. I didn't do that. You're the one that operated on my nose. What are you talking about? So he got me in for surgery. He didn't charge me for his work. However, I did have to pay hospital fees. I had to pay anesthesia fees. I had to pay fees for medication, the hospital stay. So it did cost me a few thousand dollars for this surgery where he was fixing his error. And he thankfully did fix the beak part of it. He shaved down that little thing. I had no bruising. I was only out of work for a couple days. I didn't even need to take any type of pain medication. I took CBD oil just to help with the headache. That was it. There was no bone shaving, anything like that. It was easy peasy. I just had tape all over my nose for five days till he took it off and that was it. I asked him though, when I went back for that second consult, when I was showing him the polybeak issue, I said, I go, and I really just don't like the way my nostrils are so wide and this is still pretty droopy. Back when I had the polybeak, it drooped over to the right. If I could find a picture, I'll add it. It drooped over to the right and there was a lot more tissue over here. And so my nose was, it had this beak and then it went that way like a fat here, fatty tissue deposit here with like a chubby nostril, if that makes sense. So he goes, oh, well, that would require a graft and that's a whole separate surgery, meaning I'm not doing that for nothing, meaning you're gonna be charged for a normal, enormous, astronomical, plastic surgery, real nose job, which by the way, I should have just saved my money for because between the first surgery and then all of the fees with the second surgery, I was probably just a couple thousand dollars away from an actual real nose job that probably didn't destroy my nose and that I liked. So to this day, I, and I'm not going to lie. My nose is a lot better. My profile is a lot better, way more straight, but because it was, like I said before, it was a hump. It was a bump, but it was also a hump with a bump on it. And this way it came out. This is so much more narrow, which is a lot more feminine. It's pretty. Before it was wide. I had like this weird ridge thing here. I had a very boxer looking nose. It made my face look very harsh. So I, while I do appreciate the fact that my nose looks better, after all that money, my nose constantly hurts. If you feel my nose, it's not straight. You could see I have a bump right here on the bone. It's scar tissue, so it goes to the side a little bit. This is nothing. This is 
my lighting is just my eyelashes are causing shadow right here so that's not my nose right there but my nostrils are still really really wide and from the side this still droops down a little bit i can live with it i'm fine for my sister's wedding she decided that she wanted to get a non-surgical nose job which is they just use fillers and i think even botox or something it kind of lifts the end a little bit my thought is i'm not going to invest that much money into my nose because it's not permanent so I don't, I, I don't think I'm going to do anything to fix it. I just don't have the finances to do it. It is what it is. I've lived with it this long. It's just you have to make sure that you do your research on a doctor before you allow them to do surgery, especially if that surgery changes the look of your face. Adam was so against this. Oh, the second consultation I went to after that first guy, I wasn't together with Adam with the first guy, but the second guy that I went to was so into fixing my nose he was going to send me to this a breathing specialist for the septum part of it he was going to operate with the breathing specialist he was going to do the plastic surgery part because you need to you need to break the bone either way to fix the septum and that's why a lot of times you wind up do getting part of your bone shaved and a nose job they change the appearance of your nose when you have a deviated septum because they're breaking the bone anyway so it was going to be him and a breathing specialist he was going to do the plastic part the breathing specialist was going to do the septum part and i wish i had gone with him because i would have gotten my nose fixed it wouldn't have been so uh, what's the word painful scarred and botched unfortunately I never went through with it because he was also extremely expensive and Adam would call him a quack because he was so against me getting a nose job to begin with he was like there's nothing wrong with you your face is beautiful which he's right there was nothing wrong with my appearance it's just how I looked it's how I was born it was the ethnicity of my nose however I did have breathing issues I did have a terribly deviated septum which was potentially hindering my workouts unfortunately it hasn't really gotten any worse or better because I got a botched nose job twice so that's it I don't know what else to say I don't know what you think I don't know if you're judging me or not I think if there's something about your appearance that you want to change and you want to go ahead and do it power to you don't let anybody talk to you talk you out of it if it's going to make you feel better about yourself but but word of caution please please do your homework on that doctor make sure that you're looking at dozens of before and afters make sure that you're going on websites that have reviews of that doctor and see what they say he didn't have awful reviews this guy but i didn't really pay attention to the before and after pictures because we knew that girl the problem was the girl jennifer the one with the cheating with my sister's ex-boyfriend didn't have a bad nose to start with so she just needed a little bit of refinement work on her bridge and her nose wound up gorgeous so the takeaway for you guys not only to entertain you is to just be careful just be careful who you entrust with your health with your appearance with your face with everything oh and i could probably add this part too now that you know it's not, not long enough the second surgery i wound up waking up as I was coming out of recovery and I, I wound up waking up in recovery or as they were wheeling me into recovery and I remember just like coughing I remember coughing a little bit and then I fell back asleep and then the next thing I know I heard the nurse on the phone with the downstairs with the nurses in the recovery okay so I was in the recovery room off of surgery but there was also a recovery room down like a regular hospital room where I was going to recover long enough for the doctor to release me not very long at all so i was in the surgery recovery room the operating recovery room and i hear the nurse say she had some problems i was choking on my own blood when i remember that coughing i was still halfway under anesthesia so it wasn't that bad but apparently i was choking on my own blood and thank god they i coughed it out or whatever i don't know what happened but it just scared the crap out of me because i remember thinking when i came to later and i pieced it all together oh, poor adam imagine if something happened to me that day oh it breaks my heart i made a video about it back then it was live on facebook i pulled it into youtube not the best video i think i still even had bandaging on my nose but scary stuff scary 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 stuff so that's it this is me with my nose. You could see I edit my nose in a lot of my pictures just because I don't like the way it looks still after two surgeries, but it's me. It's how I look. I love you guys. Keep staying strong. Keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>